it's Mimo on the cello. Welcome back to my cello tutorials. So today we'll be talking about the right hand and the role it plays in cello playing. First things first, we need to learn how to hold the ball. So I'll put my cello down and then we'll take your ball, hold it with your left hand for now just to make sure your ball doesn't drop. And then I'd like you to wiggle your hand just to make sure you relax your hand. You need to be really relaxed for this. Uh, okay, nice and loose. And then I will lift it up nice and slowly. And then I'll place it right there. So I'm going to demonstrate this without the ball. So wiggle, 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 wiggle. Nice and loose. And what you want to do is to lift your hand without really changing the shape of your fingers. So we might tweak it a little bit, maybe stretch the index and curve the thumb and pretty much that's the ball hold. So I will just show you where to place your fingers on the ball. So you have to do this a couple of times. Don't get tired. Okay, nice and big go. And then I'll raise. And then what you'd like to aim for is for the metal ring, you want your second finger to be at the metal ring right here. Okay. Another way to know if your fingers are in place is to check where your pinky is at. So on the frog right here, it shouldn't go below the frog or beyond the frog. It just needs to be in the frog area. So not on the stick, not lying on the stick, in the frog area. So for those who missed the earlier class, um, we had a lesson where we talked about the parts of the cello and we, this is the frog. This is the part that I'm talking about. So you need your pinky right there, okay? So, we'll do that again. Raise, uh, place, nice and easy. You might feel compelled to stretch out your index just a little bit. Feel free to space your fingers just a little bit. Not too much, you don't wanna go crazy about it. So just enough. And then I will turn it and show you where my thumb goes. So my thumb goes right here and you curve it slightly. So you don't want your thumb to collapse this way you want it slightly curved so i will show you where the thumb goes if you can look at your frog there is this um part right here that is like the edge of the frog sort of so you want your thumb to go there so not through not inside like that you just want it right there at the edge and then curve it okay and then you pretty much have your mold okay <laughs> so if you look at my thumb i have like a dent some people get this dent because of that uh, part so this might take you a while i would recommend you practicing like five minutes every day in front of a mirror it's really going to help you another exercise that can help with your bow hold is this you can do this several times so like two i'll do it five times three four and then you can keep adding you can Five, you can do it five a couple of times and then increase the number to 10, to 15, to 20. I mean, you can never do it too much. <laughs> and then do the bow hold again. Another exercise that I love doing once you're used to having your bow hold is picking your bow in the bow hold. So I'll put my bow down and then I'll pick it up in the bow hold motion. I'll do that again. It can be anywhere. So just put it down and then just pick it and make bold. There you go. So, some other exercises that you can do is I will pick my cello and I will show you what you want to do is okay, put them, pick a string. So, we have four strings on the cello. We have the C starting from my right all the way to the A, which is the highest register, and you want to put your bow right at the tip. And you want to do the same exercise over and over again so that gives you what this does it gives you an idea of how your hand should feel when you're playing in that street so you have to do this exercise and then hold the ball you have to do this exercise on all the strings so i'll go back to the g do it a couple of times you can do it five times then ten so i'll just do enough for me right now and then do the bow hold okay so do that on all strings i'll do it on deep all strings all five times on all the strings i know just a little bit practice 
trust me, if you do this every single day, and then the go home, if you do this every single day, just five minutes, not a lot, your bow will improve really fast. So just a couple more times, and then the bow hold. There you go. So once you have the bow hold, we'll move on. I will show you how to pluck on the cello, okay? So plucking is called pizzicato. That is P I Z I C A T O, <laughs> also abbreviated as P I Z. In music, bowing is called arco. So sometimes you might see in your music you have pit and then you have arco. So what that means is pluck and then bow. Okay. So I'll show you where to pluck. So always remember to relax. So we're gonna just relax. We go, we go, we go. Okay. And what you want to do is make sure your hand is sort of in the bow angle, in the bowing angle that we had done. And then you want to aim for the end of the fingerboard. So you want to space it out like this much, thereabout. And this is the plucking area because this is where we get the best sound. So we do not pluck from here because we don't get the best sound. Two, you get rosin on your fingers and you might leave oil and dirt on your strings which will not help you, which will make it harder for you to produce sound. Alright, so we'll pluck from here and I'll show you how to pluck. You need to pluck from the fleshy part of your finger right there like so. So pick a string, make sure you have a nice uh, grip of it like so. So I like to use my thumb to support, so feel free to use your thumb to support yourself and try plucking all the strings from that angle. So what this does, it also gives you an idea of how your hand should feel while you're plucking. And remember to always keep your shoulder relaxed through all this exercises, alright? I will show you how to pluck while holding the bow. The reason for this is sometimes in certain passages of music, you might find you do not have enough time to drop and pick your bow and, you know, pluck. So you might be coming from plucking pizzicato straight into arco. So you need to know how to transition from bowing into plucking and then back to bowing, right? So first things first, how to hold your bow. So if you're in bowing position, if you if you have your bow hold ready, what you need to do is turn your bow to face you. To have the horse hair facing you and you have a nice, you know, grip of it. So it's not too tight. So don't cling until you don't cringe on it. Just a little bit loose, but not too loose for it to drop. Just, you know, nice and comfortable. And then let go of your thumb and finger. Yeah. So what the thumb does, you need to put the thumb here again and it supports the bow weight and then you're able to pluck. Again, this time around the angle might be different but remember to always pluck with the fleshy part of your finger, like so. Because that gives you the best sound. Yeah? And then you can also change dynamics. Dynamic. So dynamics means, you know, the volume. So you can come from quiet to loud. I'll try and demonstrate that. And then back to soft. So that's how you pluck. So that's it for today for all you cello lovers. See you in our next lesson.